When creating a pull request and having it reviewed, it can be quite stressful. But let me tell you a secret. It is also scary for the person reviewing your pull request. Creating a pull request is hard, but also reviewing pull requests is hard too. Both need time to understand the goal and changes. We need good communication in both directions and we're putting ourselves out there as an expert on those specific changes. Reviewing a pull request is a very important skill to have if you want to succeed in tech as you need to be able to create a pull request and review someone else's work. The better you get at giving and receiving feedback, the faster you accelerate your career in tech. I'm going to make a bold statement here. I believe reviewing a pull request is more important than working on your own pull request. What do I mean by this? Well, if I'm currently working on some changes locally and I receive a notification and another pull request is ready for review, that one is more important than mine because it's closer to being done. And by done, I mean getting closer to being available to the user, which is what the goal of our project is. If that sounds interesting to you, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below. It's completely free and supports my channel. In this video, we're going to start at the beginning. Number one, how to get your pull request merged. Number two, what I look for when reviewing your pull request. Number three, how a tool like Seema can help you review pull requests as well as learning from other people's pull requests. Plus my bonus tips on how to create and review pull requests. Let's start on how to get your pull request merged. We will make the assumption you have found an issue and you want to solve or you found an improvement you want to make and you've raised the issue. I won't be going into how to find an open source issue on GitHub for this video as I have made so many videos on this topic already. Don't forget to check out these if you're looking for a good first issue to get started. Now you have made your changes, how can you make a great pull request? The changes must focus on the issue you've selected to work on and not on any other issue or changes. A common mistake people make is to create a pull request fixing many issues and then they're surprised why it never gets merged. For example, if you are fixing a bug, then do not include reformatting of other files that you may have noticed and needed a bit of formatting. This can come in a separate pull request. Plus you get more green squares on GitHub as well. When creating the pull request, you must have a clear and short title. Avoid using the words add, delete or update as well as the file name because the pull request will show which files were changed. Add more value to the reviewer by saying why the changes were made. For example, improved login security or reduced asset size. In the description, use the pull request template if the repo has one, as this helps you include all the relevant information that the reviewer is looking for. If the repo doesn't have a pull request template, then it's even more important that you fill out the description. Don't leave this blank. Approaching an empty description box can be quite daunting. So here are some suggestions on how you can complete this. Use bullet points. If there are visual changes, use a screenshot or even better, use an animated GIF. As they say, a picture speaks a thousand words. Other things you should have in mind, the bigger the pull request, the harder it is for you and the harder it is for the reviewer because there is more to go through and discuss. If there is only one thing that you remember from this video, I think it needs to be each pull request needs to focus on one set of changes. These can be in multiple files. The next point I want to talk about is getting feedback as soon as possible, as this will get your pull request merged faster. The best way to achieve this is to create a draft pull request. Why? It keeps you focused and on the right track. The person reviewing the pull request gets early access to review the changes and can give feedback sooner, which will help you work more efficiently. If there is any specific feedback or help you want, this is the place to ask for it. You can even add your own inline comment asking for extra suggestions or focus in a specific area. It is much easier to get help and discuss changes when there is something to discuss rather than everyone imagine what they're talking about. When it is ready for final review, you can move the pull request out of draft into the open status. As an open source maintainer, I review many pull requests. Here is what I look for in a good pull request. Put yourself in the reviewer's shoes and make it easier for the reviewer to understand your pull request and changes. Ask yourself this question. Does the pull request have context? Can I understand the aim of your pull request within a few seconds? For example, is the aim to fix a bug? 
or is it to add a feature? The pull request is usually linked to an issue. So make sure you add a link to the issue in the pull request description. You can do this with a link or using the issue number with the hash and GitHub will do its magic. Is this pull request up to date with the branch it's going to be merged into? GitHub will show you at the bottom of the pull request if it is not. Then please update your branch that is connected with your pull request. Are all the automated checks passing? If something is failing, you can click on the link and check the logs for error. Remember, the review process is a discussion. When giving feedback as a reviewer, I try not to tell that changes are required. I always ask, as I feel this process is a discussion rather than an order. Plus, I'm always learning too. I always do my best to get the changes approved and merged, as long as they are good enough and are an improvement on the existing code base. Any further improvements can be made in a future pull request. I try to respond to any pull request comments fairly quickly so the momentum is not lost. Even if it's with a comment like, sure, I agree, I will do this next week. That manages the author's expectations. When you are the author of a pull request, if you disagree with the changes, you can make a comment saying, I disagree with this change because, and explain why. However, given this is someone else's project, you might still have to make the changes to get your pull request accepted. Either way, it is still a great way for everyone to learn. Feedback shouldn't be considered negative. For example, I will always comment positively when I have learned something from a pull request. When I give feedback, I always try to give as much useful information as possible without overloading the person. A great way this can be done is by giving one or two lines and then a link to the resource if the person wants to go read more. This actually ties well into the tool from SEMA I want to mention. You might have heard me talk about SEMA, which has a great free tool for developers to be more efficient. As a maintainer, it can get repetitive with many similar replies. So efficiency is really important. I use the SEMA code review tool. It has many features, but we're going to focus on the snippets section, which has style tips and best practices. I love it as it allows us to have snippets we often use when reviewing pull requests, such as looks good to me or thank you, please update your pull request with the new changes in the main branch. Snippets also boost collaboration as maintainers can have and share templates between themselves and these can be improved over time. For example, if I write a snippet for maintainers to use but I didn't add a resource link, then someone else can add it to the snippet so next time it is there for everybody. Other ideas of how snippets can help maintainers and can be built over time include having instruction sections for different operating systems or translating your replies into different languages to widen the number of people you can collaborate with. You get the idea. Snippets really do help with making us more efficient and also consistent. This reduces the time spent on answering common types of replies, which gives us maintainers more time to focus on specific changes that require more attention. There is also the added benefit of improving the communication and tone of the discussion. For example, the inline comment, this line has a bug, can be perceived in so many different ways. Some people might find it straightforward, Others will think it's a bit aggressive. If you are writing this type of inline comment many times a day as a maintainer, you'll be tempted to be as brief as possible, but this can come off abrupt. If you have a snippet that says, I think something might be wrong here, what do you think? You are being time efficient, but also coming across supportive and friendly. Improving the way you make a review is not a natural part of the pull request process, but snippets allow it to be, which improves your skills as a maintainer. Now I will show you how to use snippets. You can have snippets under your own account or under an organization. We have the Eddie Hub organization on GitHub, so I've created an organization on SEMA as well. This also allows me to add people to help manage the snippet. As the list grows, we can filter by search, label, and language. If you want to add a new snippet, go to the snippet list you want to be in, and you can click Add New Snippet. Once you're in the Add New Snippet page, you can see the form fields that you need to fill in, title, body, label, and you can always update these later on. So how do we use these snippets on GitHub? We can use them by a Chrome plugin that enhances the GitHub experience. As you can see behind me, I have a pull request and it's got the comments box. And that looks standard and normal, but if I click on it, you can now see it is enhanced by the SEMA Chrome plugin. I have reaction, tags, and also I can filter by different organizations and snippet categories. And there is this search snippet library here at the top. So you can easily search for the snippet that you want and then insert it and edit it as required. So let's have a look. 
in the Eddie Hub snippets, we do have a few snippets we can use. So I want to search for the word failing and it's going to come up with the ones that match. So I can click this and now you can see it's already inserted it into the comment box. And I can still make further changes if I need to customize it further. But most of the time, we can actually just use the default snippet that we've selected. If there is no suitable snippet and you wish to create a new one, this can be done on the platform as I showed you earlier, but also directly on GitHub. All you need to do is write the message and check the box at the bottom which says save to my snippets collection. I would recommend that you check out snippets and all the other tools the SEMA platform has to offer. For example, developer portfolios, which allows you to showcase your best open source contributions and stats. I have linked the SEMA website in the description below. Whether you are the author of a pull request or a maintainer, here are my bonus tips. Having multiple people review the pull request is very important. It gives different perspectives and they don't even need to be a maintainer on the project. That leads me to my next point, add maintainers to your project. Not only do you get different points of view, but also support for your project. As a contributor, make sure all your changes go in a new branch created from the default branch. This will reduce Git conflicts. If you wish to make more changes to your current pull request, you can add them to an existing pull request by committing to the same branch in your fork. You do not need to close any pull request and create a new one. However, if you wish to make additional changes that are not relevant to your current changes, make sure you create a new branch from the default branch. Therefore, each type of change will be in its own branch and in its own pull request and not have any overlap. Don't make any assumptions. Always ask. There could be a reason it was done in that particular way. Be helpful. The aim is not to try and show how smart you are to other maintainers and other contributors. And lastly, code changes are ephemeral. They will always change. However, relationships with teammates and the community are what really matter.